Today is all about v-necklines, five types of techniques you can use to finish v-necklines in woven designs. Very practical, hands-on, a lot for you to see today. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today I have a really special video for you. It's been in the works for a while, and it's actually part of a series, and they will be all about v-necklines. I will post all of these videos in a playlist. I think v-necklines are beautiful. I love sewing them, I love making them, I like how they look, I think they suit a lot of people and I'm just focusing on how to get really really nice results and I'll be splitting these videos into wovens and knits because it's not the same thing, you just don't finish them in the same way. Today's video is all about finishing techniques for v-necklines on woven fabrics, on designs that have a v-neckline. You will find different types of instructions and designs, you will find some that have seams, in the center front, some that don't. You will find lots of different things in pattern instructions that you can adapt to what you prefer or the type of look you want or even the type of fabric that you're using. I will be showing you five techniques. In all of these techniques, you will see similarities and common steps. One of those is stabilizing that neckline. You will see me do it either by stay stitching the neckline or applying tiny bits of fusible interfacing just on the edge of the neckline. I cut strips that are between a quarter of an inch and a three eighths of an inch wide and I fuse that along to keep that neckline in shape and not have it stretch out. Very important in a v-neckline that you keep its shape, you don't want it gaping and looking terrible afterwards and not fitting the facing or whatever method you're using to finish it. So that is a common step that you'll see. You will also see trimming seam allowances depending on the pattern that you're using. You know, I like to use a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch maximum and so if the seam allowance is larger than that you will see me trimming also if there's curves you'll see me snipping and under stitching so those are common things that you see throughout even later in some neat techniques you will see those as well but we're focusing on the techniques for wovens. One thing that is common also in all the facings that you see from me are that they are block fused I don't cut out my facing from my fabric, cut out the interfacing and then fuse them. That tends to shrink the facing and make it smaller and not fit your neckline. And if you've been doing that, you might notice that that has happened to you and that you have a really small facing that you, doesn't fit your neckline and yeah, it's not nice. <laughs> so what I like to do is just calculate the amount of fabric I'll need for that facing. I'll lay my pattern pieces on top, see the area there and fuse put interfacing on that section of fabric. Once that area of fabric is fused with interfacing, then I'll put my pattern pieces on top for the facing, cut them out, and that's how I ensure that they keep the same shape, size, length, everything. So those are just very common aspects that you'll see in all of these techniques that are just done. So we'll start with the basic one, that is a garment that has a front that's cut on the fold, has a facing that's cut on the fold, and there's a v-neckline. Now, the tutorial I'm going to show you will focus on the small V here with a the facing. There will be another shape along the neckline, but that's really not important. What's important is to see how to deal with the V section, whether it be small, whether it be big. So let's have a look at that. This is the front of the neckline. It's all being hand basted onto the edges of the neckline there. I'm just gonna sew this on and then clip this there so it's a really nice V. I'm going to be sewing this neckline facing with quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm using my quarter inch foot and that will just give me a lot of precision. This is my preferred seam allowance for necklines. You can see the dot there where I'm supposed to pivot on this V. I mark that prior to sewing. On this side where the main fabric is you can uh, see the V how it was sewn really nicely and the distance the seam allowance there is quite even so it's not a crooked V so I'm quite happy to clip into that and remove all this basting now I'm gonna clip into there right up to the stitch but not through it and I'll do a little one there too and another one there my V is gonna be nice and crisp there as you can see 
and this turned out pretty good and now it's difficult to understitch the whole thing. I'll do the best that I can, but I will understitch the facing. I'm gonna understitch that little V first. You can see the point right there. I can't sew up to there, but I'll try to get as close as I can. And I'll just put a pin here to keep the seam allowance this side. This is the facing. That's why the seam allowance is pointing towards it. This is where the V is, and I'm trying to get all the seam allowance this side towards the facing because I clipped it a lot this can actually extend the V can sort of extend into a straight seam almost okay so this is the inside that is the facing that you're looking at right there and you can see how this little V was understitched and even this part here. The pattern I chose to illustrate that basic facing on a v-neckline is a Rhapsody dress that is a hack. The Rhapsody dress from Love Notions that does not have a facing finish on the front. You finish this with bias tape here, this little v, and then bias tape along the edge on the top. But this is a hack, I decided to create a facing. I decided to create a facing for this one. But you saw clearly how that V was shaped and you'll get a really nice result. Finishing a woven top with a facing that has a V neckline is basically the easiest thing you could do. So if you see a pattern that has that feature, don't think it's annoying that there's a facing there. If you take the proper precautions to block fuse your facing and follow the steps, be careful to mark the point there where you need to pivot, trim, nip, understitch, all those things. You'll be on your way to a very nice V, very crisp. So that is the most basic and we'll be building on the following ones, adding a little bit more complexity. Now the next one also has a facing. On this one though, the design has a center front seam, but the facing is cut on the fold and you might see designs like this. I'm going to show you a technique that is very easy to do and will give you a super crisp V. Unfortunately, I can't show you the completed garment because I am just getting ready to feature it on the channel, but you can see how that's done. I'm about to sew this center front seam. I had already surged it separately. Yeah, the seam allowance is 3 8 You can see that dot there. When you're sewing the facing later, the 3 8 seam allowance will come out around here. That is 3 8 from the dot to the edge and from the dot to this edge is also 3 8 So if I sewed this all the way up to the top, I would have to snip into that later to get that V facing to look pointy. So to avoid snipping, I'll just start sewing from that dot, reinforce that right there, and then sew all the way down. And then the top part of this V will be open and ready for the facing without needing to snip into anything. Here I have a facing that's pressed. Now the inner section of this facing is what I'm going to align to the neckline of my bodice, matching the shoulder seams, matching everything around there. I'll pin it very accurately. I have placed my facing right sides together with the neckline and I've pinned it all the way around. Now here on the section of the V it's going to be a little bit different. What you can see here is that I drew the seam allowance first with a friction pen and then I stay stitched it. So that it's really clear where that point is right there. On this other side, but we had sewn the center seam, but we hadn't sewn all the way up, we'd left it open. That little tip there has to be right there, one millimeter above that opening, like right there. And basically what needs to happen now is you need to sew, pushing the seam allowance to one side, so, so, so up to there, up to where that stitch is, right there. Stop stitching and then start again right there and continue there. Basically, I'll do this for about an inch, just an inch there, an inch there. And then I'll just flip this and just keep sewing all the rest. At the very end, I'm going to hold this like that and snip through the middle up to there, basically through there. And that will open up this that's already open and then when you flip it, it's going to be super nice. I've done some basting here. What I've done is baste through the middle of that seam, just up to hold that in the center, right there where that dot is. Also, I have basted from there up and then from there up. These don't need to be sewn, they need to always be free. I'll go ahead and sew that section and then sew that section. I'll use a short stitch length for this V section. So after that V section is done, then it's pretty easy, then the rest is just sewing 
around. This is where I'm going to stop sewing and I'll just start about an inch before that, doesn't really matter. Bring all that seam allowance to the side and stop right there. Right there, I hope you saw that. Leave a little bit of thread to reinforce that. And now this other section, pull the seam allowance towards this way, start right on the dot and finish around there. Okay, I've got my needle right on the spot, right there. Okay, that's enough, so I've sewn that section. I've tidied up this section, I reinforced there by hand, I reinforced there as well. You can see how this stitching is sort of on top of the stay stitch that I've done before and it meets that point there. So I'm going to forget about this, I'll snip into that later. What I'll do now is flip this and continue sewing this on. Okay, so after sewing that, I'm going to snip into the facing, not right up to it, but almost. You can see there. Okay, so the facing's on. You can see all this intersection of areas. When you put it in, it forms a V immediately, and it's so clean, so nice, so neat. This is how it looks inside. We didn't need to snip into that section because we just left it unsewn. I love doing a V like this on a woven. When there's a center seam, it works really well. I will trim these seam allowances down. I think 3 8 is a bit much to leave it like that. Trim it down to leave it at about a quarter. And then on the sections that have a curve, I'll do a few snips here and there. This is how wide I want that seam allowance to be on the facing. And I've just been snipping here. Even if this facing will be top stitched, later it doesn't mean that you can just fold it in top stitch and skip the under stitching i think under stitching should never be skipped i will be sewing like this i'll have the seam allowance towards the facing as always i'll be sewing just with my regular presser foot here on the v i'll start a tad away from the tip of that v like maybe a quarter of an inch away so i've got the facing there seam allowance towards the facing and i'm sewing on the edge here This is the tip there of the V, I'll just put a pin there so I can see and I'll stop about a quarter of an inch before that. I put a colourful pin there right on the V so you can see where I started there and then I stopped there. There's a small distance that's not understitched and when this goes inside it'll look like that. You see the understitching there, the understitching there, and that middle section is not understitched. Having that center seam there means that if I sew it all the way up to the top and then sew my facing, I will then have to snip into that seam that's been sewn all the way up to the top, which makes absolutely no sense. And let me tell you, that is how I used to do things in the past. <laughs> but leaving that small seam allowance unsewn on the top and doing it like I showed you will give you super bulk free area and a V that will just flip on its own. You're trying to flip the facing to the inside when you're done and it'll just go on its own and it'll be beautiful and very, very nice. Not hard to do, you can do it for sure. You might want to create this for yourself. If you want to add a center front seam to a garment because you're trying to save fabric or because you just want to add a center front seam, could be decorative, I don't know. It is in some designs as a design, but you could do this yourself and add it yourself if you wanted to. Now, building on what we just saw, a center front seam, and the facing has a center front seam, and the way the V neckline is finished in that case is very similar to what we did now, but with just another extra step. Let's see how that's done. These are the two center front pieces that have been sewn in the middle. They do have a seam there in the middle. Half an inch seam allowance is what the pattern uses. The black you can see there is a bit of interfacing I use to stabilize that neckline. On this V point there, when you sew, there is a dot there that marks where you have to stop sewing, so you don't sew all the way up to the top. You can see 
it's open there. These have been fully interfaced block fused at the beginning. I have sewn the shoulder seams of the dress and then the facing has been put right on top following the shape of the neckline, right sides together. And because the neckline of the dress was stabilized with that strip of interfacing there and this was blocked fused, it means that the neckline has kept its shape and everything matches really well. Now at the center of this V, there is a little thing different. Okay, that's the center of the V up closer. Remember there was a dot where you had to sew from the dot down, basically leaving about half an inch not sewn on both the facing and the main piece. You have it open there. So this is gonna help this V not be bulky there. So they both match exactly right there. And now when we sew, we have to start sewing right there where that stitch is, right on that point there and then go around the neckline, come back on the other side and finish right there as well. We won't be sewing over the seam allowance and then this will just be like free inside and when we flip it, it'll turn the V super crisp. Okay, so I'm gonna let my needle down right on top of that stitch there and I'm sewing with a half an inch seam allowance and I'm not gonna back tack, I'm just gonna sew and then I'm gonna secure that by hand afterwards. the other point of the V around the other side. I'm also not going to sew over the seam allowance. Okay so that's the V neckline sewn. You can see the seam allowance of the facing are free and inside too the main seam allowances from the center front. So basically it was just pushing them all that way, sewing right there, going around and then when you're almost there, pushing the seam allowances to the other side. So that means that none of them have been caught within that V. And I have long tails here. I didn't back tack because I, I wanted it to be really precise. So now I'm just going to secure that by hand there. At the point of this V there, I trim the seam allowance smaller just to have less bulk there. And you can see how this is open and finished in there when you flip it. And it gives a really crisp V. Super nice finish. And it is secure because the stitch started there, went around, started there. I did secure that by hand. But it's so nice. Now I'll just understitch. The V is right there. So I'm starting about 3 8 from the V. Here is the facing and the seam allowance is going towards the facing. my Celeste from each to stitch beautiful V neckline as you can see there it's very crisp reinforcing all those intersection areas there by hand just means that you have your long threads and you thread them through the same needle and just do a little knot there by hand it's just as secure as doing it by machine but when you do it by hand it can be so much more accurate with than with the machine with the machine when you want to back stitch sometimes it gives you an extra stitch that you didn't want to be there you know I think it's just more accurate and just as secure if you do these little things by hand. And the stitching inside is always present, always a tad away from the V. Don't really want to catch that seam allowance that's inside with under stitching either. You want to leave it free. It's a beautiful technique I learned making this dress that I will adopt forever and ever <laughs> because I think it's genius. And I am the type that will add extra seams when I need to. Just the best, I really like that technique. Now we hop into the realms of bias tape. I know a lot of you are slightly, slightly respectful of bias tape. I know a lot of you avoid it, but it can be so amazing. With a little piece of fabric, you can finish your necklines beautifully. I love using bias tape to finish V necklines. And if you're using the really light, lightweight fabric, like a rayon or a chiffon, just a really lightweight woven, you could do the following technique that I'm going to show you, which means you're wrapping the bias tape around the V-neckline and then just doing a little easy trick at the back. 
and you'll see this a lot in ready to wear i'm showing you this with the rhapsody dress from love notions it has a little v neckline again i love that little v for demonstration purposes <laughs> you'll see it done on the little v but you know if you have a regular top with a v neckline you can just do the same and continue putting the bias tape all around the neckline i'm just showing you the little v section so let's see I have stay stitched all the neckline of course as soon as I was able to because I don't want this stretching out and this fabric will do that. This is what I've done here with the little V. I've made some self bias binding that I had from the scraps and here this little V I did stay stitch it inside you can't see it anymore and where the little V was I clipped right up to the stay stitch. The stay stitch was close to the edge of the fabric. Where the V was, the middle point, I put a pin there so I, because I can't see it anymore. <laughs> so I just grabbed my bias tape and I just folded it like that and I just wrapped it around this raw area really carefully and it, it turns out rounded. I have hand basted that. I'm going to sew that and once that's sewn, then this gets folded onto itself. This is where you sew a little diagonal stitch like that but my fabric is so delicate, I'm gonna do that by hand at a later stage. This middle bit there where I clipped inside up to the stay stitch allows this V to sort of stretch into a straight line. So I've gotta be really careful to keep all this bulk here to the left and not create any pockets. see the sewing I did by hand there I could have done this by machine but this is so slippery and just so delicate I don't want to risk it so when you open this it forms a V there so it's perfectly done by hand I would rather do it by hand with such a delicate fabric and it's just like one centimeter three-eighths of an inch of hand sewing for that precision there and then this just gets pressed it'll be inside and it's not bulky it's perfectly fine so basically that little slit that you have for the V in the center you would stay stitch that mark the point in the center and clip right to it so the V can extend and become almost flat extended wrap your bias tape around it you know if you're doing it on a completed neckline and just sew it all around I feel perfectly fine wrapping my tape around the raw edge of the neckline basting it by hand really really accurately and then just edge stitching then at the back you saw that because this is chiffon I did that diagonal seam that's at 45 degree angles with my needle it was just a 3 8 distance to sew by hand and I think it turned out beautiful very very nice there you can see that the neckline it's little but you know we're focusing on this if you wanted to do this on a regular round neckline you just keep wrapping the tape around it nothing different and at the back we have that little section that was sewn by hand there very easy look you see this done in in mass production t-shirts sometimes you see that done on neat garments i'm not a fan i am not a fan of doing this on a neat garment on something made with a very light fabric like this it works perfectly it's got no bulk and it just makes that v so much easier to do now building on that we've come to the fifth technique which i would say is a tiny bit more complex than the others but not impossible to do and when I showed this technique a couple of months ago, some of you let me know that you've done it and it worked and that you liked it. So that makes me very happy. This is a really easy way to finish also with bias tape, but that actually you're not doing that fold little shortcut way at the back. You're actually doing like a mitered corner inside. So I'm showing you that step by step. I've stabilized with a very thin strip of interfacing there to make sure it conserves its shape. Here on the tip of this V, I have done some face stitching as you can see there. I've done it at the same seam allowance I'm going to sew the binding on. I'm going to snip into this little V so that this can extend like that. You will need to extend that to apply the binding. I've used this bias tape maker. It says 25 on the back because it's got a finished width of 25 millimeters, which is an inch. Basically what this produces is bias tape that is an inch wide finished. And what you need to cut is a strip that's two inches wide, cut on the bias, two inches wide. When you put it through this, it'll turn out looking like that. <laughs> and that's how wide 
it's going to be when it's folded. I'll choose an area in the middle of all the bias tape I've made and I'm choosing an area that has a bit of white so that the marks I need to do will be super visible. If I'd chosen this, it would be harder for me to mark on black. This is what I'll be sewing onto the neckline where I've just snipped. I have my neckline here wrong sides up and I want to be sewing this on from the wrong side of the garment so that I can flip it to the right side. I think that makes more sense to me because then I can top stitch on the right side of the garment. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this here right at that crease right there and that's going to be at the tip right there. But I'm going to be sewing this with the tape on the bottom and the neckline on the top so that I can manipulate this area and not get a pucker. You can see the seam allowance I have here with the crease it's a little under 3 eighths of an inch, so that's what I'm going to use for the entire neckline. I'll sew a section of this, I won't go along the whole neckline, I just want to get this bit done first. Okay, so I've got the tip of my V that was snipped and it's sort of stretched out there. You can see the area of the fabric that's just open there. And I've got my binding on the back. I've basically got right side of binding to wrong side of the neckline, that's the way I'm doing it in reverse. So that then I can flip this over and I'll have the top stitching done on the right side. That's how I like to do it. So right side of binding to wrong side of neckline. And I'm sewing with the neckline on the top and the binding on the bottom. I'm going to be sewing right on top of that stay stitch because I use that same seam allowance that the binding has on this crease. You can see it there. And I want to sew with this on the top so that I can see this area and manipulate it so that I don't get a pucker. Okay, so this is my V area and let's see on the other side if it's nice and neat. And it is super neat, there's no pucker there on the fabric so that's good. So I'll forget about this V for now and I'll just keep sewing this binding up the neckline. I'll choose a place here on the back to attach the other side that's coming here and I'll sew that diagonally together. You need to join these on the diagonal so the angle that you need here is 45 degrees and then the one that's coming from the other side has to be sewn like that on the diagonal too so this one's going to go that way also at 45 degrees and I just pinned everything and made sure that there was a half an inch of an overlap right there because I'm going to join them at a quarter of an inch seam allowance so I'm just going to grab these two and they're going to look like this and you're going to have a little bit hanging over here on the side right there because that's the seam allowance you're going to use quarter of an inch so it has to be matching right there and then on this side too so when you sew it like that this is actually the straight of grain right there so we'll just sew that open that up and that will have the bias tape joined here so I'm sewing this at a quarter of an inch seam allowance Okay, so here on the top of the neckline, I can keep pinning because everything's joined. Now I can sew from where I'd left off. Remember, I wanted to get this section out of the way and I've just sewn it before pinning everything. Now I'm going to pick up from there, go all the way around and finish it there. And then the binding will be sewn all along the neckline. Okay, now you need to watch carefully what's going to happen. Here is where the V was snipped into, so this is the neckline here, here is the binding. This is the right side of the fabric, this is the wrong side of the fabric because that's the way I've sewn it. Remember I've sewn it on the inside, so right side of binding to wrong side of neckline. So now you just need to find that center there and fold this. So we found the center there, right where the snip was. Fold the neckline in half as it would be on the fold just put a pin there to hold it so it doesn't go anywhere and then we have the binding onto each other there right sides together and we have the folded edges right there so we have the wrong side of the binding there and put a pin there what I've drawn with a red friction pen is a triangle that starts exactly from there to the center here of the binding and then to the other corner and this is why I wanted my binding to have a white area here so that I could draw this just some careful sewing there and there and that will form the V on the binding I'm going to sew that with a short stitch length 
so I won't backstitch here because it's just too fiddly I'm just gonna hold these tails here and start sewing diagonally here make sure the seam allowance of the binding and everything is pointing that way you don't want it to be this way because the binding is gonna come over and cover that Okay, after sewing that, I reinforced that, I snipped into there as you can see and now what this does is make a V on the binding. So this is the right side of the dress, right? You can see the shoulder seams there and the wrong side is in there. So what we're doing now is flipping the binding over onto the right side. So you can do that all along the neckline but on this V section you're going to have a little bit of bulk in there. Trim away. And I'm going to push one of these to one side and the other one to the other side. Sort of have that bulk nest on each other. And that's how you can get the binding to fold over onto the right side in a V. You just now need to tuck in all that little bulk out of the way. Clean it all up there. I'll be hand basting this all around the neckline and then top stitching on the edge. But from the right side where I can see it and where I'll make sure it's super straight and super neat. Here is the V on the right side of the dress and this is how it looks on the inside. They look pretty much the same. I've done some hand basting all around to bring this binding over to cover that seam. And now I just need to edge stitch it as neatly as I can. And that's it. I've done that V neckline binding technique with my Mornington dress from the So Beautiful book. You can see the V neckline there is very sharp, very crisp. You can see the binding around the edge of the neckline. It looks really pretty and to keep it consistent because this is a sleeveless garment, I did the same on the sleeveless armholes. But it's a very nice technique. I think a medium weight fabric would be much easier to manipulate than a chiffon for this type of, of technique. So I would do this on a rayon, I do it on a crepe, on a linen rayon blend, or linen would be amazing. But I think this is a little bit too fiddly to do it on a very, very, very lightweight fabric like chiffon. And that's why the other technique, you know, there's always different ways to do things adapting to your fabric. And I wanted to show you five ways. I hope this video helped. The next one you'll see in this little series about V necklines will be how to draft your own V neckband. This is so that you can change and adapt any neckline of any neat garment that you have of a pattern that you like. Maybe it has a scoop neckline, maybe it has a V that is not in the depth that you need or you just want to make your own neckband. I'm going to show you how to do that super easy, easier than what you think. And yeah, that would be the next video that you'll see in the V neckline series. So I hope you enjoyed this. I will put all of these techniques in chapters down below so that you can go to the exact minutes where each of them are so that it's easier for you to find them as well when you come back to these as reference. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you again very soon with more sewing.